Hi, this is going to be the first of a series of vlogs. I'm trying to kick myself out of a bit of a creative rut and thought um, maybe by sharing progress in the studio on a weekly basis, it would help me be a bit more disciplined about being in here. It's been a tricky few months. We had to move out of the house in order to have some work done and my studio became the kind of dumping ground. And I find it really hard to work when there's so much clutter and mess in the studio. Um, I will give a quick spin round. Uh, the way I've positioned the camera at the moment doesn't show quite the scale of the carnage that was in here. And a lot of it's now been cleared away. Um, exhibition season is coming upon us. So I have quite a lot of projects in the pipeline and a massive backlog of commissions that I just haven't been able to do over the summer. I always find the school holidays pretty demanding and getting enough clear time to concentrate and do a good job painting is really tricky and I find it's actually easier just to put the brushes down for the eight weeks of the summer holidays, concentrate on the kids um, and on various roles I do with the children and not really think about it. But uh, things have become a bit more pressing because they go back the end of next week, I think. And I rather urgently need to get a few projects done before the end of next week. Um, the most pressing is the opening of the Wildlife Artists of the Year. That opens in the Moore Galleries a week on Monday. I have not finished my large painting for it, or it is finished, but I haven't finished the edges. And I've to and fro about whether to frame it or to finish the edges. It's a huge canvas. I'll show you in a sec. Um, it's a metre 50 by a metre and I did think about framing it, but if I frame it, it doesn't then fit in my car. And then I have to hire someone to transport it. And they're very fragile, the frames at that size, they get chipped really easily, which is really frustrating. So quite often I just finish the edges and display them like that. And then the client, if they buy them, can finish it as, as they'd like. As it currently stands, it's actually got a red edge, uh, which is really distracting. Um, I think the background was red originally, so I just continued it onto the edge and then I didn't paint over the edges when I finished the painting, which was an error. So I've got to think about something a bit more subtle on the edges. I bought, here we go, um, some stencils uh, with a view to putting, uh, it's a painting of lions and with a view to putting sort of African type, sort of subtle stenciling on the edge. So that is going to be my project for today and also setting up some of the portraits that I have been delaying doing. I've got some yeah, outstanding ones, quite a big backlog now of portrait commissions. Uh, so I really need to get those cleared before kind of Christmas season starts. Um, so let's start with the, with the big painting. So this is the current safe play. Um, this is a, as you can see, there are hundreds of paintings in my studio. A lot of them have come out of the house and I haven't got round to uh, rehanging them yet. It's all from the last jobs to be done. This is the big painting. Got some nice cobwebs on it. Falling off the ceiling. Been sitting propped up here. If I hold it up, you can maybe look. It's this one of the lions. Um, I think. I think what I'll do first is tape off the top um, with masking tape, just so nothing falls onto the. Thanks. Apologies, I got interrupted by a teenager who's just got out of bed. In fact, it's only half past eleven. Um, that is the problem with the summer holidays, I find. As soon as I get going, doing anything, I'm sort of required to help or do produce food or something, taxi service. Um, right, I use frog tape. I find it's a lot better than masking tape. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's not so sticky, so it doesn't damage things. And it doesn't... Masking tape, I find, either unsticks itself after a day or two, 
or it absolutely glues itself and then you can't get it off and you've damaged the painting underneath. Frog tape I find is much easier in that respect. So, start at this end. Just make sure I get these lines absolutely right. Oh, this is harder than I thought it would be. Um, the great thing about oil paint is that it's really robust when it's fairly fresh. Less so when it's very old, obviously. It tends to dry out and flake. But actually, when it's a fairly recent painting, it's... Um, It's pretty tough, a tough surface to work with. And this has also been varnished, so it shouldn't damage the surface. Right, painting is now taped up. Um, I think I'm gonna have a practice run on another canvas before I actually set off doing this. Uh, I always if i'm trying something new have a bit of a practice run so that is going to be um the next step a bit of a, a bit of a trial trial and error right i'm going to start by um painting a background on this i am using the edward bulmer paint um it's a fantastic heavily sort of pigmented quite natural earthy colors i use them a lot in the house and um i, I just love them i love the tones Right, let's give this a spray just to make the paint go on more easily. I am using, part of the reason I love the colours by this company is that you get them in different percentages of shade. Hmm, I wonder if that's coming yellow enough. Um, I think it'll be fine because on the lions it's going to have a red background. So hopefully that should work because the red will come through rather than the white. Um, yes, yeah, sorry, with the Edward Bulmer, you get different shades of the same paint. So, um, you know, 100% is darkest, obviously, 20% has much more white added. So, but it's exactly the same colour, just a lighter tone. Um, so actually in the house, it's amazing for creating sort of optical illusion of light or space. Um, you know, if you're painting let's say a north facing room, you can use the 60% on the, or 100% on the window, the walls that face the window, and then 20% on the walls that are aligned with the window, the sort of walls in shadow, and it'll make the room look much bigger because it'll make it look the same tone. It's a very, very clever concept, I think. Right, now we will just have to let that dry. because I think that'll be a bit easier. Um, I don't want it shifting on the easel. So I'm just going to I want the stencil, the shapes to be subtle. You know that they yeah that works. And hopefully some of the red will come through on the canvas as well. And I can see this is going to be quite 
time consuming doing this on the canvas. You have to be very careful not to get it on the oil painting itself. Oh, that's quite effective. Um, I'm not sure I like the dots, I think I'll avoid those. Maybe catch the eye a bit. This paint will probably dry a bit darker as well. I did toy with the idea of doing sort of some gold or, but I don't want anything that kind of draws the eye to the side of the canvas. I want the focus to be obviously on the canvas itself, not um, caught by the edges. Uh, lots of artists do use gold on the sides and, and I think it could be really effective if you use gold in the painting, which, but I haven't, it's quite a traditional painting. So I think I'm just gonna stick with a plain paint. I think we are probably ready try that on the bigger canvas. Um, I just hope it doesn't look too much like tyre tracks. I'm not sure I like this one in the middle. I might just go for these zigzags. I've started, this was the first, which is similar to the little canvas we did. But in all honesty, I'm not sure that works terribly well. I tried it just the darker yellow on the red. I'm not convinced I like that much either. Um, I think the problem is, is the under, the background color, the sort of paler yellow is too pale. So compared to the tone on the actual painting, it's just too light. So I think what I'm gonna go for I'm going to try next is doing the darker yellow as the background with the lighter as the pattern and just try and make it a bit more subtle. I think if it's all white the whole way around, again, it's going to catch the eye and just detract a bit from the painting. So I think the sides need to be a bit darker. So we'll try that next. <laughs> Right, I had a bit of a rethink because that just wasn't working with the lighter edge. So I'm going to try, I've repainted it with a darker yellow. I'm going to try applying the um, stencil. I've mixed a little bit of red into the dark yellow. So I think it needs to stay a darker tone all over. So it's quite tricky to hold on to this. should be fractionally darker than the background. This will work. Ah, there we go. I like that. It's sort of subtle. Could maybe be fractionally darker. Right, hopefully it'll be a bit easier to see up here. Line the edges up. You can just see the pattern is showing up on the on the top the edge of the frame and it tones much better in with the grass on the main painting so this is the moment of truth what's it look like without the frog tape on It does stick to itself very 
Um, that's a very pleasing, pleasing thing to do. For those of you who've watched my colour theory um, videos of making test palettes, that's similarly pleasing. Right, I think that works really well. If I spin it round so you can see, it's now got an edge, but it's not, it's quite as subtle and it tones in with the rest of the painting. It'd be easier to see once it's up on a white wall. But actually, I think that's a success. It's really nice. I have to frame it. I can't remember if I've put the fixings on the back. Yes, I have. Amazing. And then wrap it up, varnish the edges, and wrap it up ready to go to the mall galleries next week. Here's a quick studio tour of some of the works on the walls. Those are all the preparatory sketches for the big, or some of the preparatory sketches for the big lion painting. That's the big zebras. This is one of the preparatory studies for the painting I've just finished the edges of. A couple more, another prep sketch for the flamingo you just saw. I think next week's job is going to be rehanging the walls because at the moment it looks like someone's just thrown the paintings at the walls. So yes, maybe a bit of a rehang is in order. This one over here is also going up to the mall galleries. Um, so I need to just sign and finish packing that one. Otherwise it's ready to go. Thank you for joining me this week. It's been great to finally sort out that line painting. It's kind of been weighing on my mind for weeks as to what to do with it. I find so much of painting is actually the sort of problem solving, the thinking and trying to decide how to go forward with a piece or create something. Uh, so next week we'll be going up to the more galleries. I hope you've really enjoyed my studio sessions and it's the first of many to come.